Okay, the fly I want to show you today is called a Great Red Sedge, or a, the Large Red Sedge. Um, you can call it whichever you, you like, really. Um, it's quite a large fly. It's a very popular fly on our river. And um, I want to point out to you that the wings are sort of roof-shaped on the natural fly when it's at rest. When it's flying, it looks a bit like a moth. However, um, and can you see how far over towards the back the, uh, the wings come? So this is what I'm trying to imitate to a certain extent, but I don't do the wings in a roof shape. <coughs> I do them uh, parted a bit because it helps the fly to land nicer. On the natural fly like this, you can see it's got these antennae at the front. Again, I don't bother much with that. And the fly I, I'm going to tie for you uh, certainly works very well. This is the imitation of it. You can see the um, how I tie the wings, the shape of them. And you can see they come well towards the bend of the hook. It's going to be tied in a fore and aft uh, style. Now we've got a couple of sedges. There's a smaller version of this called a Little Red Sedge, <coughs> which was popularised by Mr. Skews. Um, George Edward Mackenzie Skews on the chalk streams in the early part of this century. Um, that's a good fly as well, but I prefer the large one because you can see it better. Being a nocturnal fly, it hatches in the evening time, um, so it's easier to see. And that's another advantage of the wings of this shape, is that, um, you you know, it, it the fly is, is easier to see. The other sedge we have is um, is a marbled sedge. It's this one here, which is the same tie-in really, but um, I'm going to do the red sedge today because it's the most popular and I don't think you need to bother with any other sedges really. <clears throat> okay, I've already waxed the silk. Now the hook I'm using is a size 12. It's, um, it's a camisan. Uh, if you want the model, it's FKB 400-50. Uh, it's a medium-long shank, shank, and it's a lightweight hook uh, with a wide gape. Uh, as I say, size 12, because it's a biggish fly. Okay, I'm going to wind, uh, start the silk here, as I usually do, and I'll take it down to the bend, towards the bend anyway, where I tie in the aft hackle. Uh, this is a very interesting fly, interesting to the fisherman and to the trout. <coughs> Pardon me. Now, I'm going to put a hackle right on the back here. Um, I'm going to wind it on like a shoulder hackle on a dry fly, but I go pretty well to the bend, pretty well around the bend of the of the hook. Um, because it's a red sedge, when you say red, uh, great red sedge, or... Um, large red sedge, we use red-brown materials. And when we say red, they're brown. In fly time, we mean fox red, just for you to know that. Okay, the hackle goes on like this. Just tie it on like this, and I, I sort of wind it um, almost flattish. So it's a little bit like a sort of parachute hackle, I suppose you could say. I park my silk at the front. One, two, three. I give it three winds. Now, the thing is, I'll be clipping this hackle underneath a bit later so that it doesn't um, interfere with the point of the hook and allows the fly to sit a bit low in the water. Um, so this hackle will form a tail, sort of, as well as keep help to keep the fly afloat. It's a floating dry fly. And um, I, I think the fore and aft style gives a good footprint to the um, to the fly when it's on the water. Okay, now I'm going to seal off this hackle. I'm going to secure it like this. I'm going to tie it right up against the hackle and nip off the, the surplus. Like that. Okay, now the natural fly, 
the female version anyway, uh, carries a green egg sac around with it. And um, one version of this fly, tied by John Goddard, the fly isn't Goddard's fly is called the G and H sedge, um, but it's it's mainly tied out of deer hair and shaped, and he strings underneath um, some green seal's fur to imitate the egg sac. Well, I find if I rib the body with the green holographic, it uh, not only protects the body a bit, uh, but it tends to give that. Um, imitation of the egg sac. So I'm just putting that on now before I put on the body. This is a good mouthful for the trout and um, I, I fish it even in times while waiting at a sea trout pool for things to get dark because the fly hatches in the evening time. Okay I'm dubbing on here some uh, hair's ear or hair's mask to, to form the body. It's a lovely material, this. It certainly has some sort of attraction for trout. I, I don't know why, but hair is um, from the hair from the hair, <laughs> the brown hair, our natural brown hair. It's not a native to this country. I believe the Romans brought it over, but it's it's naturalized itself now. Um, I, I, I love it. It's uh, I'm always happy with it in some of my flies and it's uh, I'm always trying to work it in somewhere. Okay, that's the body on. You see, I've only just come up three quarters of the way or two thirds anyway, and I now rib it with this um, green holographic. I give one good wind behind like that at the back and gently rib through. You, you only need to have a, this sort of showing to give a hint of um, of colour. Just secure it like that. I'm a little bit restricted with the camera, so bear with me. Okay, that's the, the rib on. Um, it's an interesting fly because the adult lays its eggs, which float to the bottom <coughs> of the river, and it um, hatches out into a maggot type of uh, fly, a, a maggot type of insect, which makes its own home out of little sticks and stones, and it drags them around behind it. Um, it's uh, When it hatches, the maggot swims up to the surface, to hatch out into a fly. It leaves its home on the bottom. It's very vulnerable to trout when it does that. Um, anyway, I'll move on. Now, we're going to do wings. I'm going to put the wings on. I cut them out of a cheap old hen cape like this. You can see the, uh, the feathers. And I cut them with wing cutters. This is a type of feather. I like it a bit of mottled sort of brown in it. Uh, you've seen me use wing cutters before. I've got various sets. This is a wing cutter. You see the blade there with a the little gap which the stalk will poke through. And we put the feather down on some newspaper or something like this. Press down and give it a good cut. And it comes out like that. And we now will tear off these bits and pieces here. I've already done a couple of them. So we have that's one wing and this is the other. Okay, I'm going to put these on now. So I will just um, cut off the part I don't want. These are my two wings. I put them back to back. If I was imitating the, the, the real, trying to do an exact imitation of the fly, I would put them on roof shape. But I prefer them this way, as I say, because it helps me to see the fly when I'm fishing it in the dusk. And it's, um, it alights better. Now you can see, these wings are coming back well 
towards the bend of the hook. I'm going to put a little shape on them a bit later on. Another thing to tell you, these stalks can be used as antenna. I, I don't bother, but can you see the natural fly with his antenna? Some of my friends who tie this fly leave the antenna there. <laughs> it's up to you if you want to do that. I, I, I don't do that really, but uh, I don't find it makes any difference. So I nip them off like that. Okay, now the um, I'm going to put on a thorax. And for the thorax, I use ostrich hurl. Brown ostrich hurl like this. And I will uh, take a bit off and tie it in. Just trim a little bit off it. Get a nice section. This gives the fly a little bit of sort of buzz about it. I like a thorax on, on flies. Um, I put it on when I can because it's um, all flies, all insects in fact, have a thorax as you know and um, all insects have three parts, a body, a thorax and a head <coughs> um, so we try to get him in. Okay now I'm just going to move my silk a little bit to the front <coughs> and I'm going to wind this thorax. We can draw it back, it's what we call doubling. We double a hackle when we do that. Um, so it's a bit like that. Now just while I'm doing this, I'll tell you a little bit about the fly. I don't want to tell you how to give you hints on fishing because that's not the purpose of this exercise. But um, when the fly, when the maggot type grub gets to the surface and hatches out, it skitters across the surface of the water to the bank side. It makes a, a, a splashy run. And if you're down the river, even in time, and you see something a little splashy running across the water, it's usually a sedge. I would say it is a sedge. And while it's doing that and creating that sort of disturbance, trout like to take it. And it's one fly that you can fish with a bit of drag. Because, one dry fly, because <coughs> that skittery movement, the trout go for it. I normally fish it upstream, dry fly method, um, standard dry fly method, but um, I have in the past, if we see a riser downstream, um, I have in the past, if it's been convenient, I floated the fly down to where I saw the ring of the rise and just that it gets to it, I twitch it back a little bit. And that often induces the, um, the fish to take uh, because they think it's the, the, the um, sedge making a run for the bank. I don't wind the stalk back on this hackle because I put a lot of winds on it. Okay, now I'll... Um, nip this off and I'm now going to put on the um, the fore hackle the front hackle right here we go biggish fly which is good nice and easy to see in the dusk bump the camera there okay there's the front hackle on I'll just sort of give it a quick wind to secure it and I'll nip it off and do a proper job of securing it. Okay, now if you get some of the hackles poking forward you can push them back. There's various ways of doing it. This is a little tool I've made. This is actually a tube for a tube fly stuck into a bit of a pen you can sort of push them back like that using that you don't need the handle you could just use the tube if you want to uh, there's a, there's another way used um, by one of our tutors Harry Carville who puts a, a half hitch on like that and that takes them back like that um, but I will now give it a good wind 
to form the head, secure the whole fly and put the whip finish on. That's it. That's the head. I'll do my usual whip finish like this. One, two, three. I'll give it four because it's a big fly. I've um, almost lost the loop there. See if I can get it back. And I'll draw it up. Like that. I see. Um, I'll just snip it off. Usual way, just a gape on your scissors. Each side of the silk, up against the head, up against the fly, gently push. Now I can see I've got a one stray stalk over the front. I'll nip him off. Now that, that's, that's our sedge really. I'll, I'll rotate to show you the wings a bit. And we got the hackle at the back and we got the bit of green showing, the holographic green to imitate the egg sac. <coughs> now, um, I'm going to varnish the head before I go any further. And there's one or two little points that um, I, I, I will want to show you. To varnish the head, I'll just dip my dubbing needle in and touch around a bit. That's it. That's all we need to do with that. Now I did say earlier that um, I trim the hackle underneath, only the back one, and I simply go in with my scissors like this, up above the hook point, and just trim a bit there. That helps the fly to sit a bit lower in the water. Um, it's not absolutely necessary, you don't need to do it if you don't want to do it. Um, I tend to do it because I've had success when I've done it. The other thing is, if we go back to the photograph of the sedge, can you see the shape of the wing at the back? Um, and the way it is on this particular fly? So what I will do now is I just give the wing a little bit of a shape. It's more cosmetic than anything. I don't think it it matters too much. I just get the wings together like that, give them a bit of a shape, and 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 that's it really. That's the um, the great red sedge, and um, it's a very successful fly, a good fly on on our river. Not too difficult to tie. This is tied fore and aft method, as opposed to Palmer which a lot of people use. Um, nothing wrong with that either, but I find this is um, probably a bit easier to tie for a newcomer, and that's what I'm, I'm sort of aiming at really, is to encourage people, as I was encouraged, to, to tie flies. Okay, thank you very much for, for watching that, and I hope you picked up a few tips.